In this video lecture, we will look at the different types of signaling that have been involved there in the eukaryotic organism. The signaling defined as the distance between the source and the receptor in general. It can be of a local or a long distance signaling that could be involved there in the living organisms. For a signaling process to happen, there are two types of communication could be existing between the cells. One is communication effected through cell junction. Another one, cell surface molecules effecting the communication. You look at the first one. Here, cell junctions refers to some contact points that have been existing between the cells. This kind of a contact points are there both in a plant cell as well as an animal cell. If you look at it to the plant cell, it is plasma desmeta that connects the adjacent cell whereas it's gap junctions in the animal cells that can able to connect the adjacent cells. So these are the locations in which we allow the molecules to pass on. That is signal molecule from one cell to another cell can able to pass on through these junctions. So in this way they can pass readily between the adjacent cells without crossing the plasma membrane. The next one is a cell surface molecule based cell signaling. Here in this it happens commonly in many animal cells. The cell surface molecule that are present on the adjacent cells can able to interact with each other that results in a signal passing between the cells. In this cell surface molecule based signaling there are two types. One is an autocrine signaling. Another one is a juxtacrine signaling. These two are the signaling things that have been happening with the help of a cell surface molecules. Now we look at the explanation related to a autocrine as well as the juxtacrine signaling. So if you look at the autocrine, the signals bind to the receptor on the same cell that secretes the signal. That is a simple meaning for autocrine signaling. Whereas if you look at into the juxtacrine signaling, the signals that have been secreted from one cell, it just binds to an adjacent cell that is referred technically as a juxtacrine signaling. As I already narrated, the distance between the signal molecule and receptor plays an important role. Here, the one that have been shown in the left hand side is a local signaling that is something related to signaling for a few distance. Whereas, the other shown on the right hand side is a long distance based signaling. Now, we look at the points and explanation related to local signaling. There are two types of local signaling. One is a paracrine signaling, another one is a synaptic signaling. What is paracrine signaling? A signaling cell acts on a nearby target cells by secreting molecules of a local regulator. It is called as a paracrine signaling. If you look at the further points related to the paracrine signaling, Signal molecule released by the cells can diffuse through the extracellular fluid to the other cells. Those molecules are taken up by the neighbor cells or they may be destroyed by the extracellular enzymes. Their influence is restricted to cell in the immediate vicinity of the releasing cell. The signals which are short-lived local effects are called as a paracrine signals. Like a direct contact, paracrine signaling plays an important role there in the following process. That is early development of the cells, coordination of activities of clusters of nearby cells or neighboring cells. The immune response in vertebrates involves entirely of a paracrine signaling between the immune cells. The next one is synaptic signaling. Here, a nerve cell releases neurotransmitter molecule into a synapse that in turn stimulating the target cell such as a muscle cell or as another nerve cell. So you can able to see the neurotransmitters are diffusing across a synapse that will in turn activating the nearby target cell. Now we look at the points related to synaptic signaling. Here the signal molecules mainly neurotransmitters do not travel to a long distance. However, 
the long fiber like extensions of the nerve cells release the neurotransmitters from their tips very close to the target cell which is referred as a chemical synapse and this type of intercellular communication is regarded as a synaptic signaling when you look at the paracrine signals they will be moving through the fluid between the cells but neurotransmitter cross the synaptic gap and they will be persisting only for a brief time the next one is a endocrine or hormonal signaling it basically comes under a long distance signaling here some specialized endocrine cells are involved they will be secreting hormones into the body fluid especially the blood the hormones travel through blood and they will be reaching into the different cells but they are bound and affect only certain kinds of cells so this can be looked as an explanation here here signal molecules that remain in the extracellular fluid may enter the organism circulatory system as i already told that is in the blood and they travel widely throughout the body they travel the entire body and the specific important thing here with this signaling is these molecules are long lived signal molecules which may affect cells very distant from the releasing cell mainly this kind of signal molecules are hormone and this kind of intercellular communication is referred as endocrine signaling